Joining me now is Howard Buffett. He is, of course, the son of Warren Buffett, but he's much more than that. He's an award-winning executive producer of Virunga and The River and the Wall, New York Times bestselling author of multiple important books, including 40 Chances, Finding Hope in a Hungry World, and Our 50-State Border Crisis, How the Mexican Border Fuels the Drug Epidemic Across America. He's also the chairman and CEO of the Howard G. Buffett Foundation, which since its founding in 1999 is focused on two main areas, food security and conflict mitigation, which are issues that have risen to the forefront in Ukraine because of that brutal invasion. Now, last year, Howard donated nearly $150 million to humanitarian aid efforts in Ukraine. This year, the foundation plans to double that, dedicating nearly $300 million. Now, since Russia's full-fledged invasion, invasion last February, Howard has visited Ukraine seven times, including two times to the front lines. As you can see, he's also an accomplished photographer. He's documented his visits. And the one thing I didn't say about you is you're, you're a farmer. Yes, sir. You, so when it comes to food and, and grain and, and, and things that Ukraine depends on, you understand that pretty intimately. So let's just start with this last visit. We're going to show some images from it. You were there also with, um, with Richard Branson. Yes. Both of you have pledged a lot of money to this. Yes. Tell me what you saw that they need. Well, Ukraine, you know, I mean, first of all, this is a war on civilians. It really is. It's a war on civilians, on agriculture on global food security, democracy, freedom, sovereignty. So when, when you take all that together, it means they need a lot of help. So they need help on the front lines of uh, newly liberated areas in terms of, of food assistance. Um, they need help with civilians who are gonna need prosthetics. They need help with uh, supporting the war crimes and crimes against humanity in terms of documentation and investigation. Um, and then, probably the largest thing where they're going to need help and unfortunately a lot it's going to take a long time is demining yep. they say that almost 30 percent of ukraine is subject to landmines and of course there's all kinds of different landmines that russia has left behind but when when they retreat from an area they mine it and you know mines are indiscriminate in terms of who they affect so you're going to have a huge impact on the civilian population. You name a lot of things that are really interesting because they're not things that are covered by government military assistance, right? We we give military aid, but so it's a it's a World War One, World War Two trench warfare in the East. People are losing limbs. Oh, the the I met with a young man. I can tell you two quick story. I met with a young man, Arthur, uh, about ten days ago. You know, he's 14 years old. He's just like any other teenager. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time. A missile hits. The shrapnel takes his left arm off. Wow. And his whole life is different, right? And then I met with Dennis, who uh, was fighting in Bakhmut, lost both his legs and his left arm. And the, and the guy's attitude is amazing. And a young woman I met, you know, 19 years old, lost her life. Like she wants to go back and fight on the front lines. The, the impact of this on thousands, tens of thousands of people uh, in terms of, you know, and, and it's trauma, it's, it's future productivity. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I think the, the thing that people have to understand is Russia doesn't play by any rules. So there's no international law that they, they care about. There, there's no I mean, it's all some of the inhumanity that, is, that you're starting to see that the actions against uh, people are really hard to understand. Yeah. And, and as you said, it is a it is a war on civilians. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting that you understand very well, because you're a farmer, you have a, a, a farm in, in southern Illinois. Uh, the Ukrainians are farmers. They are first and foremost farmers. They are producers of, of various agricultural crops and grains. And for now, they've been able to get a lot of it out because of an agreement that uh, between them and Russia and the world that allows them to ship this grain out through the Black Sea. That agreement may end on May 18th. Russia has continued to say that may stop. That's not just bad for the Ukrainians. That's bad for the world. Well, think of it this way. Pre-war, Russia and Ukraine exported 12% of all the calories consumed in the world. Wow. That's a huge amount, okay? Um, they're also huge exporters in corn and wheat and, uh, you know, a, a number of things. So if, if you... if, if the Black Sea Initiative is not continued. It's going to have a huge impact uh, globally. I mean, one in three families right now are food insecure in Ukraine. But it goes well beyond that. Um, David Beasley, who just left the World Food Program, you know, last year said that in Eastern Africa, just to give you an idea, the, the food basket for a family went up 55 percent. Right. Well, you, you can't increase that amount in your food budget uh, across the world, especially in places like Africa, and think that that's not going to lead 
to additional instability and conflict. And, and we're seeing that today. Right now in Sudan, we are seeing continued instability. In Yemen, we're seeing continued instability. In both cases, there are hungry people who Absolutely. can't get the food that they're looking for. Uh, most of my viewers don't have the resources that you and Richard Branson have. You have been deployed to, to you, you've been instructed to deploy your very big resources to, to certain things around the world. What do my viewers who um, care about what happens in Ukraine, what can they do? Well, there's some great 501c3, which means they're registered here with the IRS. There's some great uh, organizations that are Ukrainian as well. Uh, Superhumans, which does prosthetics, they are a 501c3 now. Uh, they're helping civilians and veterans, but but they're they're helping people get their lives back. So yeah. you could you could support prosthetics. You could you can support uh, humanity, you know, food aid on on both the front lines and across Ukraine. But there's some uh, a number of organizations that are supporting. Uh, getting food out to people. So I think the food assistance is probably number one. Yeah. Um, and then if you have a little bit more money, you know, there's a need, a continuing need to support the investigation and documentation right. of crimes against humanity. So there's some really key things people can do. There are groups that do that, including uh, Yevgeny Vindman, Alexander Vindman's brother, who is a part of that group that is looking into getting that documentation together. L let's talk a little about um, you, you've gone seven times. You're going back two more times. Three times. Three times this year. Uh, what's your sense of optimism about it? I, the, the spirit that you saw in the Ukrainian people. When you when you are there, you get the impression they're going to win this war. Well, I, I'd look at it two different ways. One is, um, you know, I was in the Ukraine in 1991 and was part of Soviet Union in February of 1991. Uh, the streets were bare. You couldn't buy much. People were not very friendly or happy. I saw, and, and I would use last August as a great example, in the summertime, uh, driving on a Sunday in the park in Kiev, you've got people playing the guitar, you've yeah. got music going, you've got kids playing. I mean, there's more hope in the middle of a war in Kiev today than there was when it was part of the Soviet Union. So they are determined. Yeah. The Ukrainians are not going to go backwards. They're not going to give up freedom. Okay, so they're going to fight until the last person standing. Right. Um, however, you know, we've given enough for the Ukrainians to fight, but we've not given them enough to win. That's not a strategy. So we're going to have to step this up uh, along with Europe and figure out what is it going to take. I don't think it's hard to figure out what it takes, but but we're going to have to give Ukraine what it takes to be successful. Howard, my friend, good to see you. Thank you for Great. coming this way. I know it was an early start for you to get here, but thank you. We always appreciate it. Anything for you, Allie. Thank you, Howard. Howard Buffett is the chairman and CEO of the Howard G. Buffett Foundation.